The main UI is up on the screen right now. On the left hand side you will see the image capture tools. Uh, we've connected our camera through USB to our computer and this is going to allow us to take photos using mouse clicks that are instantly uploaded to the program. Let's get started. I'll first select the live view button. This is going to bring up a live view of what the camera sees. You can see my hand moving back and forth in front of the monitor. Let me go ahead and take my watch and I'll position it accordingly. After we've positioned our subject, what we want to do is uh, standard workflow would be to uh, pre-crop then snap. Uh, first and foremost, what we'd like to do is uh, let's adjust our camera settings. And we can do this obviously through mouse clicks. And as we make changes to our camera settings, you can see in real time uh, the exposure is simulated on our monitor screen. So essentially what we see is what we get without even having to take the photo we can see the exact exposure and uh, the result that we're going to be able to create. Um, after I've adjusted my camera settings uh, if I wish to I could actually save these inside the program so I'm going to say watch setting and you will see these are going to be retained inside of the program in a drop down along with any other profiles that we had uh, saved. The nice thing about that is uh, really anyone can now walk up to the program and start shooting provided that your lighting is not changing. Uh, okay, so while in live view what we're going to do is we'll want to pre-crop our object. Um, right now I've defined our crop to be in a perfect square. Uh, if you had a specific ratio for your images, you know, a size that you need, um, I've heard some customers say they need images at 600 by 400 for their website or you know whatever whatever ratio it might be you can always define that directly inside of the program um, for watches it, it makes a lot of sense to probably shoot in a square so we'll just leave it in the square but just note that you can always define a custom ratio that which you uh, that which you shoot so we're going to crop nice and up close on our object and simply from here what we want to do is hit our snap button and within seconds it captures the image and it uploads to our program as we can see here, a very high quality image. I'll take our image viewing tools and go and look at this watch one to one to ensure we've created a high quality result. Looks pretty good there. We'll go back and fit it to screen. Now we're on to shooting our next, uh, our next angle. So we'll hit live view again. Once again, it remembers our exact same crop and it's going to use the exact same camera settings as before. So maybe we want to shoot just a, a straight on kind of side angle here. Once again, we'll position as required and in our snap button. And let's go ahead and create one more image. Maybe this time it's up the back of the uh, the back of the watch. So we'll position it once again as required. And we'll hit the snap button. So in just a couple seconds, we've created three pretty high quality images uh, that are basically ready to go for our website or whatever application we require these for. Um, as you can see, the images are being uploaded to the thumbnail viewing gallery. Obviously we can click around to view different images um, by simply selecting that respective image in the thumbnail viewing gallery. I've selected all these images using the little Xbox uh, to the left of the thumbnail and probably what I want to do first is just do a little quick editing on these images. I'd like to ensure that they do have pure white backgrounds because for my website I do require pure white. So what I can do is, up in the top right you're going to see this tool, it's an eyedropper tool. And right now where my mouse is you'll see the letters R, G, and B. Basically that's red, green, blue, and that's a color scale. And as I move my mouse over the object, if you watch up in that area in the top right, you're going to see the, uh, the color values changing. Pure white is 255, 255, 255. We're pretty close, but we're not quite there. So let's go ahead and make a small change. Uh, I'll be using our levels tool. And I simply want to click and drag just a tad. And as I make changes, you'll see that little window pop out on the sides. That's a preview window that shows you basically in real time uh, the images, uh, basically your editing changes as they're made to the image. So I've made my changes. Once again, if we want to view this up close, we can certainly do so. Maybe I'll view it at 65%. Very high quality image, once again captured in just seconds. Let's go back to the standard viewing. Okay, 24%. Um, after we've made our edits to these images, next what I want to do is, since I didn't change camera settings, uh, 
and I didn't change my lighting, I can simply apply these editing changes to the entire set of images. You'll see the progress bar quickly pop up. As it's making those changes, then it will notify us that the operation is complete. I will hit OK. Our next step is to process these images and output them uh, for our desired application. Now I'm going to use the dynamic saving tool inside of the Shutterstream program. First I will give my uh, images a name, so I'm going to call it U-Boat Watch. Okay, perfect. Um, what I've done in the dy dynamic save tool is you can define to output each of these images multiple different times, maybe at different sizes, different formats, whatever it may be to different locations if required. So right now I'm saving a thumbnail image at 150 pixels wide. I'm also saving a, uh, a 500 pixel wide image and last a 1000 pixel wide image. All of these are at my web resolution, uh, JPEG quality, and uh, I, I've chosen to save these all to the exact same uh, location. Note, you can also choose to apply a watermark, that's your own company logo, stamped over top of the image, maybe for branding or security purposes. Um, you can also transfer these directly to an FTP site if required, uh, so that they're instantly on the web. Um, the last thing that we could do is, right now it's sequential naming, so what it's going to do is name them uh, in the order that we brought them in, dash zero, one, dash zero, two, dash zero, three. But if we wanted to change that and we wanted to say, okay, this will be the front view, and the second image will be the side view, and the third image will be the back view, we can certainly do so. And uh, once again, it will, uh, it will uh, name them accordingly. So let's go ahead and save these images out, then we'll go and take a look at our results. I'll hit the OK button, you'll see the progress bar once again chugging through the images, operation complete. Let's minimize and we will go to that folder. So once again, each of these images was saved at three different sizes. Uh, first images were the product page image and these were at uh, 500 by 500. Next ones will be our our thumbnail images and our third set will be our 1000 uh, by 1000 pixel wide images. So as you can see, high quality images captured, edited and processed in just, in just seconds. Um, Going back into the Shutterstream program, I'd like to show you one more pretty cool feature. Uh, just for shooting consistencies, a lot of people have told us that they do require you know, the exact same product angle uh, and just consistencies on their website with their product imaging. So we've built something into the program called Image Overlay. So maybe this is my, my standard first angle that I want to show. I can go ahead and click on the Overlay tool and I can hit Create an Overlay. And essentially what that has done, if I remove my product, is it leaves a transparent kind of ghost image over top of the live view screen. So when I go and grab my next watch, I can position it in the exact same way. Now users have the ability to adjust the uh, transparency level of this if required. Um, and users can also load previously saved overlays as well as uh, create and save new, ex uh, new overlays. Uh, once again, Shutterstream, product photography software, uh, great for shooting watches, great for shooting just about any type of product, certainly a tool that will save a lot of time, money, and effort every time you take a photo. Thank you.